If you're fairly new to design and you don't yet have the ability to listen to your gut when it comes to choosing typefaces for your projects, then this video is going to help you learn on a deeper level what all the different types of fonts are and when to use them. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Maddie, if you're new. Today is a good day because we are talking about fonts. I love typography, and I think in the last seven or eight years I've spent designing, I've gotten pretty good at choosing fonts that work really well with certain scenarios and contexts. So today I'm going to break down that process for you if you are a little bit more new to the field. Okay, let's talk about where to start here. Very first thing I want you to do is write down two or three words that describe how you want someone to feel whenever they interact with the experience, product, website, whatever you might be designing. A lot of the times this comes back to the brand. So if this is a brand that you created, you can kind of look internally as to what you want this brand to convey in terms of feelings and emotions. But you also might have to go talk to your clients, other stakeholders, if you're designing for a brand that is not your own. As you're exploring potential typefaces, always come back to the question, does this make the product feel blank, whatever are the two or three words that you chose. Every typeface has an inherent mood or feeling to it. It's sort of like a silent communicator. The words that you're using obviously communicate something to the user, but the font that they are typed out in also communicates something a little bit deeper and a little bit more subconscious. Like anything else, two people could look at the same font and have completely different reactions to it. That's just human nature. We all have completely different experiences and associations with things. But I still think that this is a really helpful place to start. So when I'm going through all of these rules, just make sure that you're remembering that, that we're all human and there's really no one right typeface for every single scenario. This is just going to give you a good background and get you asking the right questions and get you down the right path for any scenario that you're designing for. The first differentiation we can make is between serif and sans serif fonts. Serif fonts tend to feel more traditional and established since they've been used in printed books, educational and scientific contexts for centuries. They're the easiest typefaces to read at small sizes, so that's something important to keep in mind. Sans serif fonts, on the other hand, are more modern and denote newness. So the first question to ask yourself is, does the project you're designing for lean more towards traditional and well-established or new and modern? Other types of fonts include monospace, script, handwritten, italic, and slab serif. Monospace fonts have a fixed width, making them non-proportional. They were first used in typewriters and in really old computers where the graphical capabilities were really limited. Monospace fonts aren't difficult to read, but they definitely force the viewer to read slower. Some monospace fonts evoke a feeling of retro friendliness, while others are more hard-edged and direct. So if you're looking for a utilitarian, sturdy type of character, go with something monospace. Script, handwritten, and italic fonts all go under a similar category in my mind. They feel very personal and trustworthy. Italic fonts are meant to feel more handwritten as they harken back to common Italian handwriting from the Renaissance era. They feel elegant, polite, and pleasant. On the opposite side of the spectrum, slab serif fonts feel more severe and masculine. They're characterized by very straight and rectangular serifs that aren't super comfortable to read since the shape don't flow into each other at all. But sometimes that's exactly what a design calls for. They're commonly seen in conjunction with Western settings, factories, steakhouses, and other environments that could be described as harsh or patriarchal. Aside from the types of fonts that we just talked about, there are other ways that fonts within each of those categories can be differentiated from each other. They can be wide versus condensed, thin versus thick weight, low contrast versus high contrast. They can have a small versus a large X height, and they can be rounded versus more straight edge. So I want to talk briefly about each of those and what feelings they can convey, but first I just want to make a quick caveat, which is that usually the easiest fonts to read are regular weight, regular width, 
low contrast, and a medium X height. So when you're choosing body copy that readers are going to have to read paragraphs of, that's really important to keep in mind. So don't go crazy with any of the things I'm going to be talking about in this next section. However, if you are choosing a headline font or something that warrants some more personality, then these are really fun things to play around with and look for in typefaces that you're choosing. When it comes to width, a typeface can be condensed, which means more narrow, or extended, which means more wide. Because their height makes them stand out from the crowd, condensed fonts tend to be used to convey short, important messages. Think advertisements or signage. Extended fonts, because of their horizontal and drawn out nature, tend to make a message feel more important and memorable. They're also nice and easy to read from all angles. Font weight is an easy one. Even non-designers usually will consciously notice the weight of a typeface that they're reading. Usually bold fonts denote power and heaviness, while light fonts feel more delicate, sensitive, and careful. Contrast refers to the variation of the different strokes within a character. Low contrast fonts are simple and neat, while high contrast fonts are more dramatic dramatic and rhythmic. So that's why high contrast fonts are often used in theater and fashion. X height refers to the height of the lowercase x. Easy enough. But what it's really talking about here is the contrast in height in the different elements of a character. So having a large X height means the letters are all very similar in size, while having a small X height means that there's more of a height difference between the little bottom part of the lowercase d and its A sender, for example. Fonts with a large X height are more homogeneous because they have shorter A senders and D senders. Therefore, they feel more stable, safe, and grounded. On the other hand, fonts with a smaller X height have longer ascenders and descenders and feel a lot more artistic. They're usually used in poems and lyrics and other pieces of writing that are more personal. Lastly, let's talk about rounded versus sharp corners. Fonts with rounded corners look smooth and soft, so they feel friendlier and are often used when appealing to children. Conversely, typefaces with sharp corners evoke more tension and sometimes even danger or thrills. They're also more easily noticeable because our eyes as humans human beings are drawn to sharp objects. Just like the rest of these characteristics, there are many great fonts that strike a balance between these polar opposites. So don't feel like you have to ever choose between one or the other. Sometimes a dramatic choice is really what will fit the bill, but other times you might just want to choose something that leans slightly more to one side than the other. As a sort of part two to this video, next week I'm going to be sharing my 20 absolute favorite typefaces. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to hit subscribe and also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye!